Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. I've got one last ornament to share with you, and it's a fun one, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. We're going to be using a liner brush and one of my very favorite stencils to complete it. For this project, you'll need a 4-inch ornament or stone, the yellow daisy stencil from the 3.5-inch reversible mandala stencil collection, a liner brush, a watercolor pencil, a wax pencil, a dotting tool, we're also going to use some rhinestones and some uh, different shaped mirrors. Here are the paints that I used and everything here is listed in the description box below. Today we're going to paint this 4 inch black chalkboard ornament. You might still be able to find these at Michael's, although it is a little late in the season. You might get a good deal at this point. But I'm going to use the daisy stencil from my 3.5 inch reversible mandala stencil collection. This is the yellow one of the five different designs. You can use these for drawing, painting, dotting, and this project is a really good example of what you can do with it. So first we're going to trace the design onto the ornament using a white watercolor or chalk pencil. And I've decided to use every other line. So we'll skip the first, trace the second, skip the next, trace and rinse and repeat until you get back to the top. Now take the stencil and flip it over, line up the registration mark in the center, and then trace the same lines to complete the shapes. So you can see through the plastic to the trace lines underneath, and this allows you to see the design before you trace it. So what you want to do here is trace every other line. So you'll trace the center little petal design and then you'll trace that long squiggly S shape along the outer row and just do that all the way around. You can also use a little bit of putty in the center of the stencil and that kind of helps keep things stuck but I'm so used to it I just don't even, I skip the putty. So here is the design. So keep this in mind. This design acts simply as a prompt. It's not to be taken literally. It's like the key signature to the music that you're about to write, right? Or like the outline to the book that you're about to write. So it's meant for you to do your art on top of it with, you know, this squiggly symmetrical design that's basically your guiding form. So I've decided to use brushes for this design because I need to push the paint along the edge of these shapes. So liner brushes are the best tools for making those long S curves. And I'm also using fluid paint because I need the paint to flow in that smooth kind of way you know so thicker paint doesn't tend to move as well but fluid paint just glides it's just very nice and smooth so here you can see you just take a little bit of uh, paint on the end of your liner brush and then obviously pressure is going to allow that paint to have a thicker line where towards the end of your line you could pull up on the brush and it will taper off into a nice uh, you know smaller end so now we're going to use a 10 percent lighter tint of that same blue on our liner brush and just mirror that shape do the same curve just along the outer edge and then just weave it down uh, to a tapered point so that it hooks up with that petal shape in the center. Now, really quick, let me just pop in and say, do you notice how we're starting from the outside moving in? That's one of the things that I love about using stencils is that you really, as long as you have your form, it doesn't matter if you start in the center or on the outside or in the middle Whatever you feel uh, is going to work out the best, you can just kind of use that as your guide. So now we're gonna use a lighter shade of blue on the end of our liner brush and move down just a little bit from where that, uh, that last S shape was and just mirror that same arced curve
Now let's call each one of those uh, design elements flowers, okay? And each one of those strokes that I'm making petals. Notice how I'm not doing one, uh, the petals on one flower. I'm using, I'm painting that petal and then I'm using the height of that petal to guide where I place the petal on the adjacent flower. So I'll paint this petal here noting that that's just a little bit lower than the other petal and then I'll just mirror the height of that petal on the other flower and that just allows those to be the same height all the way around. You could actually use a compass if you'd like from the center of this design and really get microscopic and uh, you know get these exactly perfect but I kind of like the free flow of this. It just makes it look hand painted and I'm okay with that. So this particular painting style of um, using a brush and uh, doing a design with unfolding petals like this. It looks great with just tints of one color. You really don't have to go crazy with colors when it comes to a design like this. It, oftentimes the simpler the better. It just looks like a, a gradient. So here you can still see the chalk lines of the petals that are in the center of this design and that's where I want my brush to end. See how they all kind of point in those petals that were formed in the center? And now we're gonna finish this with a little bit of white just at the bottom. So there's a little bit of method to what I'm doing here. You'll notice that the end where the brush kind of lifts up, it's a little bit sloppy. And if anyone were to, you know, really look at that up close, there might be a problem. But there's a, there's a whole thing that you can do. And I will show you how you can clean this all up. Yeah, it looks like a mess now, but you can strategically place bits of curved mirrors on top of any place that looks a little junky and by golly it will make it look like you planned it so stick around for that because that's coming up and that was my attempt at a cliffhanger how'd i do is that so exciting all right so look at that okay so we're gonna take uh, a dotting tool and place a dot right in the center and now I'm gonna get all of the shiny stuff that we're gonna use we're gonna use different shaped mirrors we're gonna use rhinestones look at these so I picked these because they have blue and they have gold in them so it will reflect the colors of the paint and these little trays are kind of cool because you can just kind of shake them and they'll get all of the tiny ones. They'll kind of sort by size, but not really. And then I'm going to pick out six of each size that I'm going to use. Now here are the horse eye shaped mirrors. I believe that's what they're called is horse eye shaped. And I'm going to pick six of those, six of the teardrops. And I messed this part up. I didn't let the center dry, but you all are smarter than that. So let the paint dry, give it, be patient. Don't, oh, I just, I knew at that point, I was like, oh yeah, you messed up. But hey, we're just gonna <laughs> go with it. Uh, patience, you know, we just gotta do things a certain way when it's the week of Christmas. But you know what the good news was? I found the time to paint, even if it was just a tiny, simple project like this. I don't know, I just feel like when I have an active project going, it makes the rest of my life better. Do you all feel that way? I totally feel that way. Okay, so now we're going to add those teardrop mirrors right in the center. Now this is where we get to cover up 
that maybe not so pretty end of uh, where our brushes end. See how that just kind of, you can move that right over the top of where the brush marks end up and it really uh, finishes off that shape beautifully. And it acts as like this cute little flower in the center that's reflective and ornaments just look cool with sparkly things on them. <laughs> I didn't invent this. This is not a new thing, but boy, I seriously love working with rhinestones and mirrors on ornaments. I, for some reason, I don't use it in my paintings the rest of the year, so I kind of go uh, a little crazy with it during the holidays because it is so much fun and it really does add a lot of sparkle and um, look at just like mystery or something and on the tree when it lights up the lights the way they reflect off of these ornaments it just looks really cool so I say the sparklier the better so now we're gonna now one thing I want to point out that you can do better than me if you decide to do this project maybe um, don't add the rhinestones and the mirrors until after you've washed off the chalk lines. That's the only thing I wish I hadn't done uh, at the, after this. So it would be a lot easier to wipe off your dry paint, any chalk lines that are still showing up. So you can still see the chalk lines in that little horse eye section right there. It would just be um, a lot cleaner to go through wipe that off before you glue down your mirrors. So that's what I'm going to do for the next time I do this project. But other than that, it's pretty much nearing the end. This is a very quick, quick little ornament to whip up. And look at how nice those fit right in the center of that shape. Now we're going to add rhinestones in the space in between each of our flowers. I picked a nice big size and yeah, I like how that calls out to the gold in the center where the flower outline and the, uh, the center dot, there's gold that reflects there. So I like how that, that looks so sparkly. Okay, so now you're gonna see what I was talking about. So I'm coming in with a damp, wet cloth, just with water, and trying to get the chalk marks off. Now, most of the chalk lines have been covered with paint, so it's not a big deal. But you can see, trying to get around those mirror shapes is a little difficult. So next time, while the paint is dry and there's no stones on it or mirrors on it, wipe it down before you add the mirrors and the rhinestones. I was just so excited to use the sparkles that I just forgot all about the chalk lines. You know, it's like an order of operations thing and it's, it's not completely obvious. So now to finish, I decided to go in with some gloss varnish just over those petals in the flowers. This is glossy and the ornament is matte, so I like the way that looks. I like having the paint be shiny and the background be matte. This is completely optional because that's multi-surface paint. I'm sure it will stick fine, but I just like the added level of protection and that extra gloss. So here it is, all nice and sparkly. We're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna hang it up on the tree. I think you can see the elf is hiding back there. Boy, that elf has seen some things. Let me tell you, this year, whoa. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Next year, I have got some fun stuff planned. So definitely stick around and I will see you in the next video. Until next time, bye.